How is your day going, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our endocrinology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about the G protein and the receptor tyrosine kinase. But today it's time to talk about the non-receptor tyrosine kinase, also known as the JAK STAT pathway. And let's get started. This is my endocrinology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. The receptor of the insulin is the receptor tyrosine kinase. However, now we're talking about growth hormone and prolactin, and they have non-receptor tyrosine kinase or the JAK stat pathway. A tale of two hormones, as you know, we have lipid soluble hormones and water soluble hormones. Today's topic is dealing with a water soluble hormone acting on its receptor. In today's scenario, this is a non-receptor tyrosine kinase. So we talked about the intracellular receptors before. This is for the lipid soluble hormones. Then we talked about cell surface receptors, which include G proteins. We discussed these before ligand gated ion channels, such as the GABA story and enzyme linked receptor. There is the receptor tyrosine kinase or RTK. And then you have receptor protein serine, serine and threonine kinase, such as the TGF beta. Insulin is here, TGF beta is here. Today's topic is this one, non-receptor tyrosine kinase or the JAK-STAT. Who utilizes this pathway? Are you ready? Growth hormone, prolactin, and hematopoietic cytokines, such as EPO, TPO, granulocyte, colony stimulating factor, aminomodulating cytokines, such as interleukin-2, interleukin-6, and interferon. Pay attention, growth factors are here, but the growth hormone is here. Big difference. Do you remember the insulin story? Yeah, here is insulin acting on its receptor. Insulin receptor was receptor tyrosine kinase. It had an intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity, like a strong independent woman, doesn't need help from anyone. And here's how insulin works on the receptor. And we talked about this crazy story before. RAS stands for rat sarcoma. And there you go. The RAS, the RAF, and the mocking maverick elk. The end result is transcription, translation, more growth and proliferation. Time to talk about non-receptor tyrosine kinase. In order to remember the hormones that utilize this pathway, just imagine a baby growing. Okay, baby, what do you need? I need to grow, growth hormone. I need to breastfeed, prolactin, because it's prolactation. I need to make red blood cells, EPO or erythropoietin. I need to make platelets, TPO or thrombopoietin. I need to make granulocytes such as basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils. That's why I need granulocyte, colony stimulating factor. I need all of this in order to grow. So you told me about your red blood cells, you told me about your platelets, and you told me about your granulocytes. How about your lymphocytes? Whoa, that's what we're talking. That's where we're talking here. Interleukins and interferon. The story of the non-receptor tyrosine kinase is super easy. Don't panic. What are the ligands? You have the growth hormone prolactin, and then you have hematopoietic cytokines, immunomodulating cytokines. This non-receptor tyrosine kinase is a receptor that's made of two monomers. Here is a monomer, and here is a monomer. This receptor has no intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. It is not a strong independent woman, unlike the insulin receptor, because the insulin receptor, if you remember, had an intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity, like a strong independent woman. This receptor still has autophosphorylation like the insulin receptor. However, if you just said that the receptor has no intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity, where do you get your tyrosine activity from if it's not coming from within you? Where it's coming from? Well, it's not coming from within, it is coming from without. Who's that? Let me introduce you to Mr. Janus kinase or the JAK family. The JAK is coupled to the receptor, but the JAK is not the receptor. This is a separate person than this. Okie dokie, now let's activate. The ligand is gonna come and act on the receptor. Okay, uh, what kind of ligand? It could be growth hormone, prolactin, erythropoietin, thrombopoietin, etc. All right, ligand came, and now it's bound to the receptor. The receptor was made of a monomer and a monomer. Now these monomers will touch each other, kiss each other, and monomer plus monomer is dimer. Di means two. Dimerization. Is this a strong independent woman? No, this is dependent. Dependent on what? On jack. Two adjacent jack. Here's a jack and here is a jack. Will activate each other through autophosphorylation. 
this will phosphorylate this and this will phosphorylate this. They phosphorylate each other. After they phosphorylate each other, they even phosphorylate a binding site for stat. So I will add a phosphate group here and a phosphate group here. When the phosphate group is ready, stat will come into the picture. And stat is gonna bind through its SH2 domain. By the way, what does stat stand for? Signal transducer and activator of transcription. F me. So the two jacks activated themselves. And then the jacks activate the stat. Stat from here and stat from here, you have a stat dimers. They go to the nucleus. They enter into the nucleus via the nuclear pores. And then they induce gene transcription, translation, and you know the rest of the story. That's how the baby grows. That's how you get your proliferation and cell division. Because of, of course you need, remember the cell cycle? Yeah, do you remember the S phase? Yeah, what does the S phase stand for? DNA synthesis. Wow, I was not lying to you. Let's do it again. Growth hormone comes and binds to this non-receptor tyrosine kinase, which does not have intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. Here's a monomer, here's a monomer. When the hormone binds, they will dimerize. Is this a strong independent woman? No, she is dependent. Dependent on whom? On Jack. What a Jack at bleep. This Jack and this Jack are gonna hug and kiss each other and do all kinds of inappropriate stuff through autophosphorylation. I've told you. Then this horrible person will seduce stat. Well, what was the mechanism of seduction? Phosphorylation. I will add a phosphate. This phosphate is gonna attract stat. I've told you. What an absolute scummy behavior. And then the stat is active via phosphorylation and dimerization. Even the stats will hug and kiss each other. And while they keep hugging each other, they enter into the nucleus via the nuclear pore in the nuclear membrane. And now they are inside the nucleus. What do you find inside the nucleus? DNA, baby. They will stimulate DNA transcription and then RNA and then translation into protein. Of course, the first process is here in the nucleus. The second one is in the cytoplasm. And that was it. Pause and review. If you like this video, you will adore my endocrine pharmacology course available on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have an anti-cancer pharmacology course on the same website and an antibiotics course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.